Right, well now the next component I wanted to look at is the MOSFET and I'm going to be evaluating this little chap, it's the IRF3205 and I do like this MOSFET, it's got a very high current capability the datasheet talks about 110 amps, although quite how you'd put 110 amps through those little legs I don't know, but that's what it says uh, you'd also need enormous amounts of heat sinking for this thing to sustain 110 amps. But um, I'm going to be putting about uh, four and a half, five amps through this thing, and uh, just have a look at how it works. So I have here a lead acid uh, gel battery. This one, 12 volts, of course, um, seven amp hours, I think it is. Is it? Yeah, seven amp hours. And on the top of it. I've mounted this stuff. Uh, we've got, it's a bit wet there, we've got uh, the MOSFET is down here. Um, I've got here an H4 car headlamp bulb. So I can show that a bit better. Standard car headlight bulb. Um, I'm on the main beam, which is 55 watts. And uh, the top of the headlamp is connected up here to battery positive, the red terminal and the bottom of the headlight comes down here to the drain connection of the MOSFET. Now the drain is also the center pin but I've removed it, I've broken it off because it was getting in the way but it also connects to the tab so that's there. Uh, that current will then flow down here into the source pin and that goes to uh, the negative terminal on the battery. Now in order to get a MOSFET to switch on you have to raise the gate which is this pin here which is just floating around doing nothing you've got to raise the gate up to a high voltage. Now these things turn on at around I think about four or five volts but in order to get them to turn on really solidly so that you get a nice low resistance and this MOSFET claims a, an on resistance of eight milliohms um, you need to raise the gate to a reasonably high voltage. Now this glass of water is here because I'm going to dip my fingers into it so that they're nice and wet um, because that's how I'm going to turn this thing on. So I'm going to put one finger there on battery positive and the other one on the gate. And there we go. On, oh, I actually uh, bridged across to the ground, so just onto the gate. And there it is, the lamp is on. Now I've removed my finger from the gate and the light stays on. And that's because this is a field effect transistor and the static charge that's now sitting on that gate is just sitting there. It's not dissipating anywhere. There's 12 volts of static charge on the gate pin and that's holding the transistor on. In order to get that transistor to turn off I now need to bring the potential on that gate pin back down to ground. So what I'm going to do is again wet finger bridge across the gate and 0 volts and that turns the lamp off. Now the reason that I'm keeping my fingers wet is because I want low resistance on my skin and that's because the gate on a MOSFET has a capacitance and this one has a fairly high capacitance, it's about 3.3 nanofarads so I need to bring the gate voltage up rapidly because I don't want the MOSFET sitting in its sort of semiconducting region otherwise it's going to get very hot. Um, incidentally after that test I'll just check yeah, the MOSFET's completely cold. So um, bringing the gate voltage up to a good, strong 12 volts reasonably quickly, the MOSFET doesn't get warm. But like I say, the gate is a capacitor. We need to um, put a charge on it relatively quickly, which means a certain amount of current is involved, but only to the point where the gate is brought up to its uh, on potential. As soon as it's got to that potential, then no current is required at all. And that's why uh, MOSFETs require current for the switching process, but not for the on or off states. Um, anyway, that's uh, a little tutorial on how to drive a MOSFET. I'll just do that again, just uh, so that the video isn't completely <laughs> static. Uh, finger on positive, on the gate, lamp comes on, lamp stays on, and then bridge across gate to ground and the lamp goes off.